Hello guys, Lou here from City Solo Club and welcome to a brand new video where today I'm going to be showing you how to achieve this 3D 80s, 90s chrome effect on your typography and on your graphics. Quick disclaimer, I will be rocking this dodgy trim. Um, we're in quarantine here in the UK at the moment and there's no barbers open, so I let my housemate cut it. The clippers have run out of battery. So we're rocking this trim for the first video. Anyway, let's get into it. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and open Photoshop, create new. I'm actually just gonna create a A4 landscape artboard because I don't really know what I'm doing with this yet. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and create myself a solid black background. So I've seen this effect a lot recently. Uh, it seems to go through like different waves throughout different time periods. At the moment, I'm seeing it a lot with black letter typefaces and soft acid graphics rather than the big bulky typefaces you'd get from the 80s and the 90s. You can start with whatever you want to use. I'm, for the purposes of this video, just going to use a big old bold Nike logo. And I'm going to pop that in the middle. About there, it's got lots of nice space around it. First thing you're going to want to do is right click on your graphic and go to the blending options. You're going to want to go over to this bevel and emboss panel and click on there so it brings up all the options. You're going to want your style to be an inner bevel and the technique smooth with a thousand percent depth and the direction is going to be going down. Now the size and the softness of this effect completely depends on the size of the graphic that you put in there. 32 is fine and then the softness. I'm actually going to bring that down to about 8. Under the shading, you're going to want to keep the angle at 90 and the altitude at 30. And under the gloss contour panel, you're going to want to go to the drop down if you don't see it and go to ring double. So that will look like these sort of inverted mountain sort of thing. Underneath that is a few more options. The highlight mode you're going to want to keep as normal and with an opacity of 100%. And the shadow mode also going to be normal, but we're going to bring that down to 54%. And that's obviously going to be a black on there. So make sure that's white and that's black. So we're going to go ahead and tick inner shadow. So now that the inner shadow is ticked, you're ready to start playing around with some of these options. Again, I'm setting the blend mode to normal and keeping the opacity at 100% with an angle of 90%. Now the distance, the choke and the size, these are all again going to like depend on the size of your graphic. Um, but really what you're looking for is just sort of a nice little bit of the shadow coming on the top right there. Um, the choke is sort of going round. Again, you kind of want that just to be quite subtle. You don't want it to be too overpowering. You want to give it a nice border around that. And the size again, that's going to depend on how much of that is actually coming over to your, over to your design. Um, we're going to keep it quite low. We don't really want it kind of fading into that background. We want a little bit of it sort of feeling like it's appearing, but not like it's being lost. So we're going to keep that down, I think, to about 12. That should be fine. Don't worry about anything underneath there. And the next panel that you're going to want to go to is the gradient overlay. So as soon as you press on here, you can already see that it's starting to have those sort of chrome vibes going on. Again, your settings might look a lot differently over here. Um, but I'll go through it and explain why each setting is which. So blend mode again is going to be normal and at opacity of 100%. And um, the gradient, you're going to want a white to a black gradient. So for the overall effect, it's nice to have the dark to light on either side of the graphic with like a nice beam of light going from the middle, uh, cutting through um, and that color cutting through the middle. So to achieve this, what you're going to want to do is just choose the, the standard black to white option. Uh, and you can just go ahead and press reverse. Uh, simple as that. Uh, the style you're going to want to put to uh, reflected if it's not already on reflected uh, and make sure the align with layer is um, is turned on. Basically if you convert this to a smart object at a later point in time it will automatically do this for you um, but what this does is it just applies that gradient to the bounding box of your graphic rather than applying it over the whole artboard. So for the angle I'm going to keep this at 120. Uh, I quite like how that theme kind of goes straight through the middle of the design um, from basically from bottom left to top right. And when it comes to the scale, you obviously want the band in the middle to be quite apparent, but you don't want it to be too too harsh if you get me. So we're gonna sort of bring that up. So you start to see the edges sort of fade out, but you can still kind of see it. It's not completely lost. So 132, 
I think that's a good start. I might actually bring that in slightly more. So to about 120, 120 will do. Cool. So that is sort of the base of the design done to be honest. Uh, now we want to go and start adding some curves to sort of make that pop a little bit more, make all of those sort of highlights and shadows a bit more harsh. And uh, then we can apply our gradient over the top, which is going to give it that color. So go ahead and press OK and close that. So you're going to want to go to your curves layer uh, and click on that. It'll bring up this uh, curves property panel. You're going to want to do one point there and one point there on the graph. And we're going to do an S curve, but we're going to do an inverted S curve. So the shadows we're going to bring all the way up to the top here. And then the highlights we're going to bring the whole way down to the bottom. Once you're happy with your curves there, you're going to want to close that. And now we're going to add our color over the top. So we're going to press gradient map, which will be in our adjustments layer. And as you can see, it's applied it to the whole artboard, which we do not want. So to avoid this, you can go down and just simply add a folder above your, uh, your graphic and drop it into that folder. Just rename that Chrome. Um, and then what you can do is shift click on both of these so it highlights both of them right click and just create a clip and mask and it's just going to apply those to that folder so everything that's in that folder is going to take this effect but it's not going to affect your art folder or anything like that so go up to your gradient map and double click it and it will bring up this window you just double click on the gradient again this window will pop up which is the gradient editor now when you start applying these gradients it's going to take the gradients and the highlights and the shadows from what we previously have added to our to our uh, to our graphics so save to add this one as you can see it's still carrying those dark and light areas as well as overlaying this gradient starting from the black and white i want that nice beam of color running diagonally through my one what you can do is underneath this gradient is click as many times as you want and it will add new points to it which you can add different colors so i'm going to go ahead and add this one at the end and put that to black as well so we have black on either end and i want the band of light to sit on the lower half of the artwork and again you'll see this as you start adding in more colors like where the gradient sits over the like, overall design. So I'm going to start off with white and I'm going to bring it down a little bit there. And uh, then I'm going to start adding a few more colors. So I'm going to add pink on the left and then on the right, I'm going to add like an electric blue. I'm also going to start tightening these up a little bit. Uh, and start seeing how these gradients are starting to take shape over the gradient below. And also add in a dark blue here. Cool, and I'm happy for that as my base color. Now you can actually go back and look back at your bevel options and those blending options that you first started to apply before we added the color and um, start playing around with those again because you can't really get its full effect. You can't really see how it's gonna sit properly until you've added that gradient map and added that the curves. It's always good to sort of get a sort of rough idea of where you wanna be um, and uh, then apply those adjustment layers and then come back and make some more edits to it. Some of these look like a little bit like they're melting, so I might just bring the softness down a little bit more, give it a few more harsh edges in there. And the size, you know what, I'm actually happy with the size of that. Um, as you can see now though, you're starting to see these like nice like sort of pools of reflection and colour going on at the bottom of all of these bevels, which is really nice. I'm actually going to go to back to the gradient overlay as well, which is our base coat, and I'm just going to see if the scale what happens when I start to mess with the scale a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to put mine actually to 109. I'm starting to like the look of this. This is looking like it's going straight on a t-shirt on ASOS Marketplace. Um, you know, quality. The one thing I don't really like too much is I'm not really liking how you can see these with sort of banding lines going through. Um, so I'm actually gonna add a little bit of grain to mine. You don't have to, if you like it like that, keep it like that. Uh, but to do this, what you can do is just right click on your design and I'm gonna convert it to a smart object. 
Uh, now that it's a smart object, I can start applying more filters on top of that. So I'm going to go to my filter options, I'm going to go down to noise, and I'm going to go to add noise. That's looking a little bit fly in it, probably a little bit too much noise there. I'm going to bring that down probably to about two. I think that is pretty perfect actually. I like how it's sort of fading between each other with a lot of grey in there, it's looking pretty good. So press OK. And I'm pretty happy with the overall look of that. Again, you can jump into the smart object and edit any of the bevel options if you need to go back. And you can also go up and edit your curves or edit your um, gradient map after you've done this anyway and just apply this straight to it. I'm gonna go back and actually just make these a little bit more harsh, I think. Uh, and I'm gonna bring those lights down a little bit more. So I'm really liking how that is, it's quite, it's quite dark. You can see the pink coming from the top, the white band coming from the middle. So the one thing we're lacking now is some sparkles, some beams of light coming off of our amazing designs that we've done. Go down to your shapes tool and then go down to the polygon tool. And if you go up to the top here, it says sides. I'm gonna make mine four. And if you go to the gear and uh, go to the drop down window, you can actually press star um, and it will come up with this option of how much you want to indent the sides of the star. I'm going to make this quite high and I'm going to make this 95%. Press enter. Um, and just make sure that your fill color is set to white. So once that's done, zoom into your design. That creates your beam of light over the top. Like so. You're then going to want to duplicate that by pressing Command J and rotating it by 45 degrees, wherever it decides it wants to go. And then if you click on the outside edge there, it will bring up these sizing tools at the top. And make sure that this is connected and press 50%. So that's scale it down by 50% into the middle. Uh, press Enter and then press tick there. And you see you've got this nice gleam of light there. Um, if you shift click both of your little light gleams that you've just made and convert those to a smart object and then go up to your filter tools, blur, Gaussian blur, and you're going to want to set that to about I reckon about three. And we're also going to drop the opacity down to about 80. Cool. Click on your shape and press Command-0 to zoom out to your artboard. As you can see, it's quite a nice looking light gleam on the bottom left hand side there. Um, and then to recreate this again, you can just go onto your, your polygon layer, press Command-J to duplicate, and then just move that over to a different area in your design. I'm thinking the top of the K here would be quite nice. I'm going to click on the edge there, OK. We'll rotate that by 45 degrees. And again, I'm going to make that probably 30% of what the original one, maybe 40. Uh, press Enter and then just move that up to the top of that K. Cool, so we're pretty much there now. If you zoom out and have a look at your artboards, uh, you can see that the metallic effect, the chrome effect is in full force with those lights coming over the top. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. And um, if you did decide that like after this, you want to apply this to something else or change it, obviously, because you've made a smart object in here, you can actually double click on your smart object. You can go in this layer and add, add some text. Um, I'll show you some black lettering. I'm just going to create a white bit of text and make that. It's not even white, is it? It doesn't really matter. Drop that in the middle. I'm going to hide the layer below, but I'm going to press Alt on the effects and drag those on. So that's going to copy all those effects over the top. And you can see that though it's already added that bevel to the top of that. So if you press Command Save, that's going to save that. And if you go back to your design, obviously the gleams are out of. Uh, out of place, but you can just go ahead and move those. You can see how it's actually 
uh, applied to that black letter typeface. Um, which yeah, it's on Typekit by the way, so you don't have to pay for that unless you don't already have uh, Creative Cloud. Um, so I'm going to move those to a few spots over there. And you can see how it sits on a black letter typeface, which also looks really nice. I don't know why it's glitching out. My computer literally is dying today, which is not great. Um, but yeah, I think it looks both, uh, great on both. I'm going to go ahead and actually undo what I did there because I prefer the Nike. So that's it for today's video. Hope you have learned something new. I hope you've managed to achieve what I've achieved here. Um, let me know um, if you do post any of these on Instagram, tag City Soda Club or tag Lumos, whatever you want to do, um, and I'll check them out and share them on my story or whatever. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Well, I should be dropping videos now every single week, um, seeing as I'm at home all day, every day, for the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's anything down below uh, that you want to see. Um, but if not, I'll be happy as of each week anyway. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to do all those things that other people say to do. I'm not gonna ask you to do it. I'm not really too bothered. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers and goodbye.